Hey, Ahmad Austin here, and I want to welcome you to Painting with a Palette Knife. Um, what we're going to do on this lesson is I'm going to paint one of my signature uh, jazz paintings. I'm going to use uh, a lot of bold colors. I'm going to use a large palette knife and a smaller palette knife to create my jazz musicians. Um, let me show you. Here's one of them right here. Here's one right here. Uh, as you can see, I use red for the uh, shirts. I use a white background, a lot of texture, a lot of movement, a lot of color. Kind of going to do the same thing with this one. I sell a lot of these. Um, actually, I'm getting ready for it to put some more work in the gallery. But I want you guys just to see how I start uh, my jazz painters from beginning to end. Um, <clears throat> the jazz musicians kind of look a little two-dimensional, more so than three-dimensional. They almost look like silhouettes, but that's okay. Um, I have painted all types of things, but I found that this is something that I like to do, and this is kind of how um, it kind of just kind of evolved over the years. Um, check out the website, Paint with a Palette Knife. Also, sign up and get a free painting palette knife um, tutorials and lessons. And um, also, if you're interested, you join the uh, Palette Knife Academy, which is also a good tool to um, learn more about the palette knife. But anyway, let's go ahead and get started. Um, I hope you enjoy it. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me. Thanks. First thing I'm going to do is draw my jazz musicians. Let me use a smaller brush. Just have a brush. There we go. And I'm going to start off with the piano player and I'm move my way up to um, painting some uh, saxophones and other people. So I'm going to start off here. I like making my uh, musicians have block head. I don't know why, I just like it instead of the overhead and stuff. I don't focus much on the, um, the face, facial expression or anything like that. I just want to capture the movement, the body movement of the uh, musician. Here's the piano player, chair, kind of leaning back. Could make his head go up just a little bit more. Make it look like he's getting down. I'm just kind of lightly outlining and drawing the musician. And this is pretty much all I'm doing is just drawing shapes, so to speak. Rectangle, rectangle, rectangle. It's pretty easy. If you ever start off painting, I advise to draw simple stuff. Apples, oranges, basic shapes. That's how I've gotten better. Now I'm going to start painting my um, musician. Let me see, what would I want to put right here? I love saxophones, so I'm going to put a saxophone in there. I'm going, let's see, I would have him going this way. This time I'm going to have him going this way. a little off, that's okay. I probably should have made him a little bit taller. Let me see. Make him a little bit bigger. That's about the only problem I have when I'm drawing. Make sure I get the proportions right. Basically I'm just lightly drawing. Kind of want his body to lean back a little bit. I might just, yeah. I'm going to bring his head back just a little bit. Bring the saxophone up. You probably can't really tell what's going on, but you'll see in a little bit. Body could be a little bit wider, so bring it out just a little bit. Arms a little bit too thick. Bring bring them in a little bit. And and that's pretty much it with that. <clears throat> now let's see, what can I want to put over here? Still got the piano in the background. Uh, let's see. I might have some more people going this way. Let's see. I'm going to do a trumpet player. He's going to lean back as well. Let me see, I'm going to put him back right here. Kind of make it look like they're facing the um, the uh, piano player, and have him lean just a little bit more. Might have the one leg coming out. Bring his jacket down just a little bit. Bring 
the piano line going over a little bit. And that's it. I'm put try to put one more player right here. Might bring his head just about right there so you can see the trumpet. I know you can't see it, but I know what's going on. Can't probably can't understand it. It'll all come together. Let's see. Trumpet player says fun. Get one more in there. Um, let's see. Try to get him right here. Get him playing the bass. So you kind of see that bass coming. I want that something to touch his leg. I kind of like to have <clears throat> each uh, musician touching each other some way or form. So, so bring that back. Just kind of have some some movement and continuity between the uh, musicians. That's it. Might bring his head out just a little bit. And that's it. Alright, All right, now I'm going to go ahead and start on my background and I'm going to move my way to uh, the musicians itself. Here's a little bit so you can see my palette. Turquoise, red, um, brown, black, and academy yellow. Um, <clears throat> here's I'm going to use a large palette knife. Uh, I have a bad heart. <laughs> I hate to say this, but I have a a um, bad habit of not cleaning my brushes. I don't know if you guys can see that. Not cleaning my palette knife. Um, I really don't care. That's just me. That's just kind of who I am, um, which is probably not good. I don't know. But anyway, I'm a little messy a little bit, but that's just who I am. So, But I'm going to go ahead and start and work on my uh, background. I'm going to use a pretty strong color, um, which is this color right here. Kind of like a turquoise. A lot of my jazz fans, I use a lot of bold colors. I know a lot of my um, customers, they like that. Since it's jazz music, since I'm painting jazz musicians, uh, the color kind of complements the subject matter. And basically, I'm just layering my um, turquoise paint on the background, leaving some nice cool texture. I tell everyone it's like kind of like laying icing over cake. Filling my background. Sometimes it's hard to get in those tight areas with a large palette knife, then I have to move down to a smaller size palette knife. I'm not sure what number palette knife this is, but I just kind of call them large, small, small, medium, small. Just kind of until you get to the more odd looking ones. I see that I'm running out of paint, so I'm going to have to put some more paint on here. I'm not painting in any certain direction or anything. I'm just kind of filling in the uh, empty background. One thing about painting with a palette knife, you will use a lot of paint. So it's best to get, uh, when you first start out, get some inexpensive paint. But you don't want to get the real cheap paint that's real uh, translucent and you can see straight through, especially um, <laughs> a lot of people feel like they can use paint from Walmart and <laughs> that's not the way to go because it's so thin you can see straight through it, especially not good for making textures either. You want to get a nice student grade paint. Get a little bit more paint. I'm going to now get the smaller palette knife to get in my small areas. <clears throat> I 
again, my, when I paint my jazz musicians, it's not real neat, pretty messy. Again, that's just who I am. I just like painting like this. For so long, um, when I was in college, we had to paint so rigid and so tight. And when I got out of college, I just, I just, just, just wanted to loosen up a little bit. I think that's how I kind of evolved to these jazz musicians too. I paint something that I can kind of just paint some, paint, be loose with, with it. This may sound a little funny, but I love the sound of the palette knife scratching on the canvas. <laughs> it kind of turns me on. <laughs> I know that sounds crazy, but I like it. Get the edges right quick. Let's see, get in between here, the legs. Sometimes it can be a little tricky, but that's okay. Probably messed up. I think that's I did the wrong part. I think that's the piano I just painted. I can come back over that though. Between the legs, get in between the, the bench, piano bench. Let's go ahead and get in between these two guys. Again, I'm not painting in any kind of direction. I'm just kind of filling in my uh, empty spaces, my negative space. <clears throat> kind of like laying icing over cake. That's what I tell everybody. If you ever bake the cake, put icing on it. You just fill it in. Cake with icing. I know you can't really tell what's going on, but I'll fix all that. It may look kind of messy, but I'll fix all that. I've been doing this for a while now, so I'll fix it. Come back in and clean it up. <clears throat> I love this movement right here with this guy bending his back back. I love capturing those moments. The only thing I would suggest that I wish I would have done is drawn the musicians a little bit higher so the heads can be kind of up here as opposed to low. So kind of help with the composition. And maybe to do something to kind of fill in another empty space. That's pretty much it for right here. Again, you can see some cool textures. Try to fill in the empty spaces. Well, there's transparent spaces where you can see through the canvas, see the canvas between the paint, so try to fill that in. That's the one thing about using student grade paint. It's a little bit thinner than say professional paint, say like golden or uh, some of the others. Yeah. You can add stuff to it medium to make it thicker. Again, it's just me. I just kind of go ahead and attack it. Now I'm going to go ahead and begin adding the uh, color of the uh, jazz musician shirts. I like to paint. Have all the jazz musicians having the same color shirts. It's just something I like to do. Since there's four or five figurines, I just like to have them matching. I know a lot of jazz musicians don't dress like this, but just kind of uh, bring unity to the painting overall. Here I'm just laying in the color of the jacket, so to speak. <clears throat> it's kind of out, kind of not staying inside the line, but that's okay. I'm not trying to go for perfection or perfect or anything. Uh, again, I'm just laying the texture, the paint, all on, trying to fill it in. I'm going to come back in and define the actual jacket, the arm, and all that kind of stuff. Right now, I just want to fill in the color. The way I'm painting here is a little bit different way I teach. Um, using the palette knife is just kind of how I developed my own style over the years. 
but if you take the course you can see how um, you learn the basics of painting with a palette knife. Once you get comfortable with painting with a palette knife you can begin creating your own style, developing your own style. Mine is, you know, a little bit messy, not real defined, but that's okay. That's kind of who I am. I paint fast a lot. Again, I'm just filling in. These figures are also stylized a little bit. Some of them are skinny. Some of the body parts are a bit bigger than others, but that's okay. Some of the turquoise is mixing in with the red. That's okay too. Kind of like that. The wet on wet kind of gives a unique effect, unique look. A lot of times I paint, I paint with music. When I paint these types of paints, just kind of let it flow. Just kind of get in the zone. So I like Michael Jordan. <laughs> And one more. As you can see, I'm running out of red paint. That's okay. Don't have much to go. Try to get his arm in. What I like to do sometimes, I get some of the paint over here, bring it over here. And this is one of the arms for the uh, musician playing the bass. And that's pretty much it right there. Now I'm going to go ahead and add the pants. Here I'm going to use a brown for the pants. I kind of like the turquoise, the red, and brown. <clears throat> it's a nice color scheme. There's no method to my madness. <laughs> Again, I'm just laying pink as I see, as I go. I encourage all of you guys to paint with a palette knife. Just try it out. It's very relaxing, very therapeutic. Don't focus on trying to make it perfect. That's what a lot of people mess up at, trying to make their painting perfect. <clears throat> I'm thinking that it's going to look perfect, it's not. Here's his other leg, kind of leaning back. Bring his rear a little bit out so. I just love doing this. Just cool. I like it a lot. <laughs> and that's pretty much it. Let me get his pants over here. And then I'll move on to the instruments. Got a saxophone, uh, trumpet, bass, piano. So go ahead and do that. I think I'm going to go ahead and move on to the uh, piano since I have the black already out. I'll start with the bench first.
probably could have did this last since it's a dark color, but it's okay. Who says she has to follow all the rules, huh? <clears throat> do the back part. Did you notice I didn't look at any photo? I've been doing this for a while. I didn't have to look at a photo or anything. Just kind of know the movements of the chess musician. I've been doing this for a long time. But in the lessons that I teach, I do use photos over real life in the painting academy and um, also in the uh, free lessons that you can find on the website. Mm, let's see, how did I do that? Boom, boom. Like that stuff. That's pretty much it. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and start on the musician. I mean, the instruments. Uh, I'm going to. I thought about using a goldish color, but for some reason, since they're already white, see the camera's showing. I'm going to actually keep it white. So, I think this would be a cool color scheme. Now the turquoise paint is still wet, so it's going to mix in a little bit. But that's okay. It's a little dry than the other colors, but it'll still mix in with the white, and that's fine with me. Yeah, I know my instrument, my saxophone may look, be a little cricket, but that's okay. I'll probably come back in and clean this up a little bit. I think that's it as far as that goes. Now I'm going to paint my face. I'm going to mix in some, some cadmium yellow and uh, some umber, raw umber. See that color right there? Like a little bit darker. I had a tad of red in there. Most bases are have a little red, reddish or orangish tone to it. So that's it. it for that. Inside of the black. Use the tip of my palette knife to kind of throw some little texture. I like doing that. Side of my Thing. Now, I noticed that my piano stops right here. I, I might just stretch it out. I know a piano is not that long, but I just want to have that long black line in the back to kind of show some. Uh, I want my, I don't want that empty space. I don't like that empty space right there, that turquoise empty space. So I'm going to bring it back a little bit. 
the turquoise is still wet, but that's okay. I put enough black on my palette knife to kind of cover it up pretty good. If I was using a brush, that it'll be a little bit harder to do that. And that's it. Make sure I got a nice, clean, straight line going across. All right. space, make sure I get that. And that's it. Uh, let's see. Mm, I'm going to go ahead and start on my face. Most of my face, I like to have my heads from light to dark, so I'm going to use a little white right here. Just kind of start it off on each one of them. So most of our time when we read or looking at things, we start from left to right. So I'm going to put my head from light to dark. Starting from left to right. There's another head right here. You won't be able to see it that much. All right, now I'm going to use start on the face. Here I'm using a mixture of red oxide and white. I'm going to make it a little darker on the right side. Remember I said I had from light to dark. Sorry from left to right. And I'm going to do that throughout the uh, painting, through all my faces. I'm just kind of scratching in, actually the form of the head. This head may be a little too high, so I'm bring it down just a little bit. So it's a little bit better. I'm going to clean this up right here with the saxophone. Got a lot of empty space. A lot of canvas showing, so. Same with this part here. It's my computer. And that should be it. Bring this down just a little bit more. <clears throat> I'm kind of defining the instruments a little bit better. But you get the idea. We're going to start on the hands, do the same way as I did earlier, left to right, light to dark.
Here I'm just using the tip of my palette knife. I know it looks a little messy, but that's okay. The colors kind of still touching each other in the wet on wet. That's okay. I kind of want to make it look like the fingernails right here. Should be it. Okay. Now I'm going to define everything with this black. My favorite part. One of my favorite parts. No, a lot of my paintings I suggest not to use black. But since I'm using this type, I'm painting this type of style. I'm not really doing any uh, light and dark values or anything. I'm just going to use the straight, the black straight out the tube. But if I was painting a shadow on an apple, I wouldn't use black. I would use the complementary color. Like I said before, this is more kind of like almost like a silhouette, so to speak. Not much value, so that's why I'm using black. But I love this part right here. This is my favorite part. Kind of outline showing the movement. I like how the colors kind of mixing each other. Not trying to be perfect, just being subjective. Outlines hands. Some artists would not like doing this. It kind of takes away from the painting or it looks messy. That's okay. One thing I learned about art, there's no right way or wrong way to create art. If you look at some of the great artists in the past, they went against the norm. Especially Picasso. It's the first person I think of. who did something totally different from the norm. So, hey. Maybe I'll be the famous Picasso, who knows? Or Van Gogh, my favorite artist. I'm going to use some light highlights with this turquoise to kind of make it look like a stream. Just kind of outlining my, my other musician. <clears throat> something but that's okay. I'm use some red for the note the keys, excuse me, notes, <laughs> the keys. Right there. I use this red for inside of the trunk. The turquoise here and there. And that's pretty much it. And I'm gonna go ahead and define some legs. See how I'm making all these lines and stuff with my palette now because it's still wet and showing some of the canvas, which is cool. I like it. And I'm going to start austenizing, that's what I like to call it, just kind of going through, just kind of doing this, making different strokes. That's kind of my little style. Right 
here and there. it off, got streaks up here, bring some down here. Fill in an empty spot. Try to get this edge right here. Another color, just kind of add a little extra, just a tad bit of this part. I guess consider the highlights, so to speak. I'm going to add some orange to it. This may be a little much, I don't know, it may take away from the painting, but I just want to add one more color to it to the palette, just here and there. Say, for instance, my, my uh. Kind of using the on to help define some of the legs and stuff like that. So, so kind of, so everything won't look so cluttered, so to speak. I'm using this orange to help define each object that's touching each other. And that's it. zoom in a bit. I hope you guys enjoyed this lesson. Um, email me anytime at AAustinArt if you have any questions. Also don't forget to sign up for free painting uh, lessons using a palette knife at paintingwithapalletknife.com. Thanks.